Hi, I'm here today with Chris Baker, Director of Product Management and Business Development at API. Chris is going to be taking us through the steps in setting up a laser tracker for a basic measurement. For this video, we'll be using the Radian Pro, and in other videos, we cover the differences when using the Core or Plus or another brand of laser tracker. Thanks for joining us today, Chris. Appreciate you having me, Daniel. Absolutely. So what are your first considerations when you walk into uh, a measurement site? You know, what are you looking for in the location? Well, the first thing that is the most important is to find, take a look at your job okay. and see what the best angle to set the tracker up is to do the least number of setups. The more data you can grab from one location, the better. And then once you've chosen your location, what are the actual steps then for starting to get the tracker out of the box? So kind of along with the same line, angles are very important. So you want to find the proper stand setup. Our stands from API, as well as some of the third party stands, they can adjust in height. So you can have everything from down on the floor with something like this trimount all the way up. So you would want to do that and then make sure the tracker is secure on the stand. Okay, so once the tracker's on the stand, then what's the next step? If you're operating the Pro as we have here, you're gonna make sure that your control box and everything is connected to the tracker. Mm -hmm. Normally, I like to work backwards. Okay. You'll turn the tracker on. Uh, with the Pro, it's going to be a slight warm-up period, okay. and it's due to the interferometer in the Pro. The Pro has an interferometer, which is a helium neon laser, so it has to work itself to the right temperature to be optimally accurate. Okay. So that time period is going to depend on the temperature where it was stored to where you're operating, but it tends to be in the neighborhood of about 15 minutes. Okay. And then, uh, is there anything else we can do while we're waiting for the tracker to warm up in that time? So the proper answer would be to set up your common points or tie-in points or your drift check points, whatever you would call those. So you'll set those up if you're going to have to move to another location or also just to check your drift throughout your measurement process. What tends to be the case is that's when you go get your coffee in the morning. So. <laughs> Okay, so the, the coffee's hot, the tracker's warmed up as well. What else do we need to do before we start to measure with the tracker? So the first step is always gonna be to run a calibration on your tracker. Okay. With API and with the Pro, you're gonna run tracker cal or T-cal. Okay. And we have a four point QVC, which would be the most uh, intense check. Still only takes about five minutes. So it's four different points and different angles. Then we also have a quick one point check. And that one point check is used more sporadically. So once the tracker is calibrated then, what would be the process for connecting any additional accessories like the V-probe or the eye scan in order to start measuring with those? So first of all, you would make sure you have your PRM loaded into whichever of your software you would be operating. Okay. And have the antennas connected or either the cable connected as the accessory. Mm -hmm and then you would shut down TCAL. Okay. Be sure to do that. Mm -hmm. And then start your third party software and then begin measuring. Okay, and then uh, is there any kind of calibration that needs to be done for the accessory itself? There is, each accessory has its own calibration setup. Okay. I normally recommend doing that in the third party software mm -hmm. because if you do it in our TCAL, then you will have to take the PRM from the TCAL into the third party. If you do it within the third party setup, it's the exact same steps. Okay. It's just already in the software. Okay. And then, so what are the, uh, the steps for actually measuring then once you're all set up and everything's calibrated and you're in the third party software? So your steps for measuring are gonna be very unique to your job. If you're on a job by yourself, you may choose to have an automatic stable measure. So when you take the SMR out, and you hold it stable for a certain amount of time, the tracker will take the point for you. If you have somebody else uh, working with you, you may have them to hit measure. So it's whatever features you have and your unique setup. Okay, well, thanks for joining us today, Chris. I feel like we learned a lot about how to set up our trackers and get them ready for a basic measurement. No problem, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video on how to set up your laser tracker. If you'd like more information on the differences in setting up the Core and Plus laser trackers, please click here. And if you want to learn more about adding additional hardware to your laser tracker, please click here. 
If you learned something from our video today, feel free to put a like on it. And if you're interested in learning more about API and getting more of these metrology educational videos, please subscribe below. Thank you.